Hi, I'm Gail. And hi, I'm Catherine. You know, last month, June, the U.S. Supreme Court overturned Roe versus Wade, eliminating the constitutional right to abortion that has been law for nearly 50 years. And now women's access to legal abortion will be determined by individual state, by each state. It's expected that half or more of the states will force a woman to bring to term a pregnancy that will be a perilous cost to her and her family, as well as to the society at large. The court's ruling has ignited action among all people who support pro-choice in particular and women's rights as human rights. A documentary film tells the story of a group of young Chicago women who built an underground network providing low-cost illegal abortions, more than 11,000 of them in the late 1960s and early 1970s, before the Roe decision made abortion a constitutional right. The film is titled The Janes, because Jane was the pseudonym, pseudonym used by all the women. The Janes premiered as a, at the Sundance Film Festival and is now airing on HBO and streaming on HBO Max. It's gaining notable attention across the country. Women Over 70 is proud that so many of our podcast guests are tireless activists for women's rights. Among them, Heather Booth, episode 29, who founded the Janes, and Patricia Novick, a PhD psychologist and ordained minister, episode 25, who was one of the Janes. Heather and Patricia both appear in the documentary. And so Dr. Patricia Novick, Patty, is with us today as my personal friend and activist collaborator of some 35 years, and as a friend to the Women Over 70 community. And she will reflect on what it means to her to have been one of the original Janes. She'll correct some misconceptions and untruths about the Janes and their mission and suggest possible paths forward. So welcome, Patty, to Women Over 70. Thank you so much for being here to help us frame conversation and action on this extremely important issue. So let's begin. Um, as I noted, you and I have a long history of shared values and working together to, uh, to help empower people to make their own best choices. Why is it important for you to speak about abortion rights to our women over 70 community? Well, I, I, I'd like to talk about it a little bit in the context of our relationship and our work, Catherine, that you with as an adult educator and commitment to choice and values uh, of people uh, making their own decisions. I think that's really at the heart of this. The, the, to live in a pluralistic society. Um, I remember as a child when I would say allegiance to the flag, I understood that to mean that there are many different kinds of people with different choices. And I know that you, and also for me, in our individual and combined work, have made a commitment to the choice, to the awakening, that people see themselves living in a democratic, pluralistic society where choice is at the heart of who we are as Americans. Yeah, very nice. Thank you. I think I would add choice and care. Yeah. Right, caring, caring for all of the people that we've been fortunate enough to, to interact with. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> so. Um, and as one of the original Janes, P Patty, you, you can set the story straight about its mission, its practices and impact, and what stereotypes and misconceptions do you want to dispel? Thank you. Thank you for asking that, Gail. Um, one of my daughters um, uh, noted that on Twitter, uh, people were saying, oh, these were a bunch of white college girls helping other white college girls. And um, I thought that was really curious and incorrect because as a counselor for Jane, I never counseled anyone who was a college girl. I had grandmothers and people who had five children and people who, for whom the issue of abortion really was contrary to their faith tradition and they had to struggle with it. So the notion of who the people who came to Jane were was one of the misconceptions. 
I think another misconception was that after Roe v. Wade, uh, Jane continued and worked primarily with African American women. Um, many others had the opportunity to travel from state to state. So a lot of our clientele and people who came to see us um, were African American and also Latino at that point. Another misconception, which I think is important, is that this was not a charity. This was not a social service agency. That what we were committed to and the counseling we did was about people making choices about their own bodies and their own lives. And there were different reasons and different explanation and different needs in different families from different socioeconomic and cultural groups coming to see us. Um, another misconception I think that was, was important is that who we were, we came together because we saw this as an important issue. We worked very hard and at the end of it, most of us returned to our own lives after Roe v. Wade. But as young women, I mean, I know for myself, I was pregnant. There were five of us who were pregnant. And one day we had a, a shower for Heather because she was about to give birth to Danny, her, her son. And we called and said, Heather, come to the shower. Uh, but we told her it was a crisis with Jane. And, uh, you know, she came and she was sort of panting. And here we had this very traditional baby shower, you know, with sculpted ice creams and, um, you know, corsages for everybody, you know, and, and various games. In many ways, I mean, I, I certainly at that point in my life was looking at catalogs, you know, with furniture and was learning to cook. So the sort of combination you know, of being in many ways, quote, American women, you know, I was cooking. And you see in the film, there's a pork roast that's being cooked. We did a lot of cooking, you know, so that the combination of being committed to rights of a broad variety of people, and in many ways were in conventional senses, at least for me, you know, American women with, you know, sort of images of the late 50s, early 60s. Does that make sense to you, Gail? Yes, I, th I think that the film does a great job of portraying that because I was struck while I was watching it of how at how ordinary yet remarkable the chains were. The children were running around. As yes. you said, five of you were pregnant. Yes. And, and you know, you were wearing ordinary clothes and, and you know, living your lives. And, and that really made an impact on me. Thank you. Thank you, Gail. Another misconception, I think, but I think the film may have made this point, is there are a lot of men involved that are husbands, um, fathers, uh, boyfriends, were involved in raising money, in driving, and doing, you know, a whole series of activities connected to the James. So we were supported by the men in our lives in very significant ways that mattered. Uh, my husband, for example, you know, had a paper bag and would go down into the taverns on 53rd Street and collect money. And from our neighbors and from others, you know, it had to be cash, um, uh, you know, because what we were doing was illegal. But um, Susie Schwerin, for example, who was one of the Janes, her daughter uh, at, the, at the festival uh, in San Francisco about the Janes tells the stories of her mother would dress her up and push her in the buggy, you know, in a very uh, sort of upscale outfit because she was carrying, bringing all this cash to the bank. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Those are wonderful stories. You know, you, you mentioned that some after Roe versus Wade, some of the, many of the, the Janes kind of went back to their, their regular lives. So I, I'm wondering if they were, was this a single issue for, for some of them? Whereas for others of you, it seems that this is part of a, a, a whole constellation of social issues as, and being activists. And I wonder if you could speak to that a little bit. Yeah, Catherine, that, that's true. For some of the Janes, it was a single issue, uh, a commitment to and to control of your own body and the significance of issues of health and of supporting other women. 
um, others of us uh, have been long time social activists on issues of environmental rights, on issues of civil rights, um, on, you know, on a broad range of, of current things that are you know, coming up in the Supreme Court. So f for me, it's been a lifelong, uh, you know, I'm still at it. When um, in the 60s, I, as I mentioned to you before, I was on the Northern staff of SELC, uh, Dr. King's organization. And uh, he said to me, you know, you will be a woman warrior. And uh, here I am, you know, <laughs> Reverend Dr. Patricia Minovic, still at it, you know, still committed, still engaged in social justice work. Mm -hmm. You know, whether it's showing up for demonstrations or whether it's raising money or, you know, whether it's encouraging other people or whether it's preaching, you know, in whatever ways I I'm able to talk about issues of justice and choice, autonomy, privacy, and personal freedom. Mm -hmm. yeah. So is there more about the sort of the historical context that you would want to, to tell us about? Yeah. Um, I think what's important um, is that abortion is not the only issue here. I mean, it's certainly significant, but if we look at the history of state rights, if we go back to, um, you know, the Civil War and what were the issues that were being addressed, the issues that were being addressed about state rights and how um, people could have others as property and that those individuals did not have autonomy, did not have the right over their own lives, and the Civil War raised those questions. I think if we look at that context over time, that it's that's what's being raised again, that it's really a question uh, of voting rights, of issues of Jim Crowism, you know, separate but equal, and a history in this country of privacy, autonomy, uh, connection to oneself, control over yourself, I mean, clearly it's okay to persuade someone else, right, to your position, but to have laws that tell you what you can't or can't do with issues of privacy. Um, I, I, I wanted to mention when I was pregnant, I was teaching in the city college and they told me that I had to take the time off because little children, and this was college, are not allowed to see pregnant women. And uh, yeah, and, and the case that I made was pregnancy was a private issue, and I wasn't going to share when I got pregnant. And so I kept working, you know, I felt fine till the day before Allison was born. But the others uh, took the time off because they were required by the system that people should not see pregnant women. Yeah. So that, that's the, the, the shaming that comes with being a reproductive person. It's yes. amazing, isn't it? Yes. It's just, yeah. it, and it was prevalent yes. in so many parts of our, all of our institutions. Mm. Yeah. In corporations, mm -hmm. uh, in social service agencies, in schools. Yeah. Wow. Wow. And, and how that impacted the economical uh, position of the woman who had to stop oh. working. Exactly. Uh, out of her own choice. Yeah. Uh, we couldn't afford at that time for me to take the time off. And I certainly felt well enough to work, but I was told that I had to take a three-month leave because I was pregnant. Yeah. That's amazing. Um, I just lost my train of thought. Oh, there, there's a lot of discussion now uh, in the media and among individuals and groups about the, the issue of abortion. So what else might unravel? What do we need to be... What are we concerned about? Sort of this uh, erosion of human rights and, and privacy and dignity and that. What, what, is, what are you paying attention to in those conversations? Well, um, you know, I hear from, I get a lot of emails from other women clergy around the country who are connected to community-based organizations saying what they can do. Um, they live in states that that are control will be controlling whether people can cross state lines, how people will be punished, 
what they will be punished for. Yeah. You know, in, in vitro fertilization, you know, obviously will become an issue. Um, uh, gay marriage is another issue. Uh, voting rights, so that the questions have not seen abortion as a single issue. One, in terms of people's health and physical rights, and abortion is addressing that. But I think at the same time, we have to look at the other constellation of issues that impact on privacy, well-being, and wholeness mm -hmm. for men and women. Yeah, yeah. I think it's important. It is not, it is not a single issue, and it is not just a woman's issue. Right. Right. Sure. Thank some you. People, yeah, yeah, some people like to categorize it that way. Well, Gail, you look like you're ready to say something. I, I am. <laughs> I am. You know, when you were on our previous uh, podcast episode, Patricia, you said, I have no doubt that anything is possible with dreams, friends, and resources. And so do you still feel that way? How, how, how do you feel now in light of the most recent uh, ac actions that have taken place? Well, um, I hadn't seen most of the Janes in over 50 years. And when we, and now I'm hearing from them on a daily basis mm -hmm. on what they're doing, what they're inspiring, what they're creating, and how they are reigniting the work. And I'm hearing from people, and we're all hearing from people all over the country about how we can create other Janes in their states, in their communities, you know, in their small towns, you know, it's burgeoning issues. Um, various t-shirts that say Jane are being circulated and being created by organizations to raise money uh, for this. So my, I'm, I'm just, my, my email is flooded with new information, with new ideas, with new suggestions um, from clergy on the issue from political people on the issue, from mothers on the issue. So there is a groundswell of activism. Um, uh, one of the Janes has suggested four areas of work, which we've all sort of agreed to. And one is to recruit people, to recruit them to work on elections, mm -hmm. to recruit them to help organizations, to recruit them to help to create Janes in their own communities. Um, another issue that we're concerned about is just simply raising money for organizations. And, and I will send you a list of places like Emily's list that we can add to the podcast of where people um, can do this. Um, I think the other is the issue of the message, getting the message out, talking to people, talking to friends, talking in your churches and synagogues. Um, doing podcasts, whatever you can to get the work out. And I think the issue of electoral politics, of participating, because at the level of federal judges, right, in those elections, and that level of what it means in the state on privacy and freedom and autonomy, I think those issues are, are ones that we're all addressing. In different ways, different different ones of us. Yeah, Gail, does that? I guess the answer to your question, Gail, is there is an abundance of resources and people and friends supporting the dream. So, no, I haven't changed. <laughs> That's good to know. Yes. So, um, you talked about messaging as one of the main, one of the key elements, yeah. and I know Planned Parenthood and other other organizations have come out with some guidelines, suggestions for, for how to frame this issue, how to talk about it. Are there, what what um, what part of the messaging do you think is really important for us to, to, to know about? Um, well, where we started this conversation, Catherine, with where you and I come together about humans have the right to make a choice. It's what a pluralistic society is all about. It's how we can learn and understand and communicate with others who are different than us. And abortion is just one part of that overall message that what we have to talk about is choice. You know, as a member of the clergy, it's in Genesis, right? That God gave us the right to choice in relationship to God, in relationship to our own conscience. You know, the very, from the very beginning, as humans, we have the right to make choices. 
and control over our own bodies and our own selves. We can persuade other people with things we believe in, but we can't legislate what they're going to do or how they're going to do it. I think it's at the very heart of the work that the both of us have done our whole lives. And for me, that's the key message. Yeah, I think um, the notion about choice, obviously, as the, as the really the cornerstone of, of, of all of this and the freedom that is, is part of our democracy to make our own decisions and that there's a very, um, legislation should play a very limited role, but that really does put uh, as you mentioned before, about we need to we need to vote, we need to campaign for all levels of government, local and uh, national, and matters greatly who our, our governors are and who the judges are, and it just it's all throughout that system. So, especially now, state by state, and I think you know I have a tendency to to support what's going on in my own state of Illinois. And I'm pretty interested in Stacey Abrams in Georgia. And so I will do some to support her, but I, I'm really realizing I need to go broader than that. And what, what's your advice? Well, I, 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 you know, it may be, it's different for person to person. Um, the gun issue is, for me is particularly important. Um, I was in Highland Park yesterday, counseling people who had been part of the tragedy uh, of, of families uh, being torn apart and and people being murdered, one more, but right here, right here in our own community and other places. So the issue of guns and violence for me is clearly an issue. Um, the question about our planet, you know, of, of if we don't take care of our trees and our environment, it will just be gone. Um, what are our rights in terms of education and learning and experience. I mean, uh, my friend in Oklahoma was talking about, she works in library and the books being controlled and all these books that she had been sharing with children, she can no longer do that. So the, you know, the right to be able to read all kinds of things, you know, all of this is happening now. And yes, we're in a war, we're in a war in our own country for the rights for autonomy, for privacy, for liberty, and justice for all. For all. <laughs> right. I have a, um, a, a young friend who is an obstetrician gynecologist at the University of Tennessee Hospital. I, I may not have that name right, I'm sorry, Nikki. And, uh, and so she is very much into women's rights and has become a bit of a spokesperson for the hospital on this issue. Now, as you know, Tennessee is one of the states that has laws banning abortion, and uh, they're about to get stricter. And that may take on issues such as in vitro, which you mentioned, yep. and also uh, contraception. Yep. And, and so... Uh, while I have always myself been active in this area and am uh, certainly have been there to to um, stand up for all these causes, I'm feeling even stronger right now with with the gun violence that just happened in Highland Park, Illinois, and with all of the Black Lives Matter issues and the inequality that we're all experiencing. So, so thanks, Patty. What else do you wanna say about this? God bless you, Gail. God bless you, thank you. Yes. Thank you, thank you for your engagement and your participation and your commitment. Bless you, thank you. So, Patty, um, is there anything else that you want to, to make sure our listeners hear about either the, the history, the what's going on currently, how we think about and, and, and plan for the future, the strategizing? There's so much to be done. Yeah. Um, well, as I suggested, uh, there are these four major areas of work that those in Jane have identified around getting the message out. Uh, and clearly the point of that is choice and control of our own bodies. 
clearly recruiting people, talking to neighbors and friends and colleagues so that, you know, the issue doesn't become boring, but that we're it's alive and real in the moment is important. Um, the raising of money and the sharing of money in whatever way you can. Again, I carry a paper bag in my purse and I ask people for cash. I, you know, 50 years later, I'm still, you know, raising cash in a paper bag in my purse as I did, as I did then. Yeah. And then being part of the movement, you know, I showing up for demonstrations, you know, I am uh, not a, you know, young chick anymore and, you know, public places, I have concerns, but it's important enough that I show up um, as an older adult. You know, I, I wrote in the Black Lives Matters demonstrations this summer. Um, I'm participating in the abortion rights demonstrations. I'm uh, participating in the electoral process. You know, it's it's a way of life. And I think that you know, we have to fight for our country. And these are the ways that we know how to fight through participating in a movement, to bringing resources, to getting the message out, to recruiting our friends and family at whatever level mm -hmm. people can engage. Mm -hmm. That's that's what I see as my job, your job, our job. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm really, I'm really grateful for you framing it this way. I I've talked to a, a couple of women who have said our age, our age group has said, well, why, why should I care about this? I'm, this is not my issue anymore. And that seems it, that's a really a, a scary kind of perspective to me. So I appreciate your framing it in this way that, that it's really about a choice and, and control over our own bodies and our, how we are living, you know, living our lives. Well, I, I think part of, of the message that you and Gail are bringing with the Women Over 70 project is that we have to model, that it's our job at this point in our lives to be models of what we believe, what we care about, what's important. So in some ways, for me, it's even more important now than it was then for me to be able to talk about and share and influence and who am I, you know, as an older adult, and what wisdom can I share, and what learning, and support of my country? I, I yeah, I, I clearly feel more urgency about it now than I did then, Catherine. Yes, I, I certainly understand. And so, thank you for doing the podcast, well, not just but all of them, because it's about engaging those of us who can make a difference by talking about these things we've seen and known. Thank yes. you. Yeah, and thank you. Thank, thank you so you. much for this is we're just we're really, really grateful to have you as our guest today and help to spread this message. And we'll probably come back to you for with some other ideas. Thanks. So, thank you, Patty.